Oh, Carrie has like, I'll show you how it's done. Uh -huh. That's uh, that's definitely an option. <laughs> and look, we can't even question it. This is the this is the thing that's frustrating. It is, yeah, okay. It is very. I was about to say it is Vera support, right? We're not we're not seeing Ezreal support here. What would be wrong with Ezreal support? Ezreal support sounds great. Get that blood song working, you know. <laughs> At this point, I wouldn't even question it. Yeah. And um. I think Grimuji is also a fantastic as well. Oh. oh, no, we're doing it oh. again. Oh, no, I, no, 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 Really? Because, so, so again, what I want to reiterate, in fear, if you go Lethality Varus and a poke support, but they can't good. even, like, I don't even know if they die to a gank here. Well, uh, Grimuji, he might be in a little bit of trouble, does have to heal. There's the flash forward from Henna as Carrier is trying to get aggressive. Doesn't have the Ignite, but just needs another auto attack. The flash forward from Execute does absolutely nothing. And now Carrier is trying to pop off. He just needs one more, but he's not going to get there. It's a double for Willer in the end. And that definitely is a decent start for Furex. Yeah, Lady Fizz is really good, but even though Karma's win rate is abysmal, we have seen exactly why she's... Oh, yeah. Uh, because her laning is rather silly. And if Closer can maintain that level of pressure, it might make it hard for T1 to actually utilize the power of this Orianna Umbrella. At the same time, though, normally I would say that T1 are always happy to go into a team fighting situation because I think Rel Ori is such a strong core, especially even on Hit Varus as well. But the Ezreal does throw me off a little bit because the value of that, I think, is very reliant on you being able to actually get a lead, right? In, in either terms of Dragons, which obviously not going to be the case. They did trade for Grubs, though. Ooh, Closer continuing to put Faker on Alicia in this lane. Finds himself the Mantra Q, and Faker might actually be looking for a reset here. See whether he can continue to play as well as he has. As Zayas with the World Ender here. Uh, clear has already gone all out. Does he actually have the damage to kill him? Oh, that was a beautiful interruption. But Clear is still fighting, gets the ward down, and Zayas oh! will be solo killed by the young upstart. And that is huge. Because Clear has, has been struggling he so has? much in the laning phase. All right, and there is a kickback on the Gumiushi as well. Okay, never you mind. Fear X, they are here to play today. And that is now a killing spree for Will. Up for it, uh, as far as the poke is concerned, later on. Uh, but this isn't. This is a game that is now. It's it's about T1 getting themselves in a better position where they can actually fight for a late game. But Willa is has decided that he does not want late game to happen. It's almost up. Yep, he is. Uh, he's just done with that. As we have the pullback already with that world ender, and Willa's in melee range. He can kick whenever he likes. Ona will turn up though. Gets the kick through. That was so sick from Willa. But now the distance is being created. He avoids the Q. Close and up. T1 is still here. They're going to need closer to turn up, and there he is. Another kill for Willa and a flash out from Ona. And Fear X, a couple of days off, and the team looks unrecognizable. Clear on the Cassante, together with Willer. Look for the gank. Zayas is able to outplay it initially. Owner shows up. And it looks like Fink might backfire, but then closer. Great timing. We'll have to pay for this with a play towards the mid lane, but with this pick not being that successful when it comes to winning, we have seen how obnoxious it can be in lane. And a lot of the losses were also into Senna, who I think does a really good job, especially when paired with a Nautilus, yeah. to mitigate the poke that comes out in these mid-game fights. That's going to be two Drakes now and a Hextech oh. possibility Man. for Fear X. And I think that we do see T1 still. Uh, this is by no means a, a lead that is impossible to come back from, right? We do have the plates still going overwhelmingly in their favor, particularly towards the bot side of the map, so towards top. We do have the gold still being pretty even. It is a it is a nice lead, but not oh. enough by itself as they go in. X Gates coming on over here as Ona will get queued. Faker moves over. And Kumiyushi, he's caught by himself. The flash comes through as Execute is delivered towards the Varus, and he is just dead. Beautiful target selection here from Firex. And right spots in order to open uh, the, the chance to pick off the but. Varus. Yeah, this is the problem, right? In the uh, even though they are going to be able to probably pick up this herald here, they're going to lose first turret block, which means gold lead that they have. It really isn't that big, and I think that the composition of Fear X actually does really well until we get to the real later stages of the game. Yeah. Uh, but but mid game team fights with this composition still are going to be a nightmare. And oh, knock up has to flash out of there. Yeah. 
Good flash respect, because I think he was definitely dead unless he did that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Exactly what's going on. Another cancel should be able to come through here as Execute. Yep, gets the handshake, and Carrier might even be in trouble. Has to flash to get himself out, and the Ignite still ticking. And that is, again, more punishment. Again, the composition, I think, falls off later down the line, but no signs of that right now, especially with how big Willer is. Yeah, and I don't think it falls off if they get a Hextech Soul either. No, I think, like, no, nothing, be good. nothing will fall off at that point in time. Um, and they're going to look for Soul Point. That should be a bit of a guarantee here. Execute I mean, if, his ult. Yeah, if Ona can get into the pit, then there is a high chance that he can steal things away as now Zayas looking for a flank GP. angle. Okay, dangerous times. Teleport coming in from clear as well. There's the Magnus Storm. Chains of Corruption going wide, but Zayas, he is in the Dragon Pit. Now he's out. Gets pushed away, and there is the soul. Soul point for Willa. Still, Zayas able to get a kill or two here, but now he has to deal with four people moving towards him. And Fear X, they'll run over the fight, only losing Execute and securing the Drake. See whether there is going to be an answer, because it's Horizon Focus and the Malignants now completed uh, for Closer. And Showmaker demonstrated to us yesterday that you can do a team's worth of damage with only a couple of items like that. And we'll see whether Closer can do the same thing. It's had a bit of a quiet game, but it's otherwise looking fine. As all Execute. Right. Execute going to drive this one into the turret. He is committed. And now he is going to be face called. Um, thankfully, he can do that. But that is a big cooldown now uh, un unavailable. Can't believe he would say he would commit. And then he just ghosts C1. And that is good news. Going on a fight. Trisha Barrage is going to connect there as Willa now getting dissonance. Ignite is down as, ve as well. They're really trying to get rid of this uh, Lee Sin from the fight so that he can't get into that back line and make things happen. Q's coming in, but a lot of this poke on the side of Fear X isn't landing until now where the handshake comes back in. But that is an Aatrox. I don't know whether you want that one as the Magnus Storm flies forward and it's Gumiyushi that blows them up and now Zayas will just jump all over them. And that's a clean ace. Clean ace. Baron's gonna be gone. Dragon no longer on the table and that's why we were holding our breath atlas and i think ferex should have held their breath because the willingness there was great the execution unfortunately was not yeah i don't know how much i enjoy the idea there, we really see the difference between these two teams as good as ferex their early game was they couldn't hold the bluff, right? You need to just, I think, you just go towards Baron and start it up. And often we criticize teams that do that. But in this scenario, I actually think it's valid. It is also hard for T1 to reliably engage onto you. You need to force them to do something. And Fear X wanting to be the team to pull the trigger. If XQ was playing Nautilus, that might have been a game-winning play. But instead, it, yeah. it, it, it probably is the end of the game, right? Like, from this point onward, now T1 is going to siege. They're probably going to get at least an inhibitor. That's what I meant, yeah. Uh, but I do I do also think that now uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not looking too hot for Fearex. I think it's going to shock wave the wave. Shock wave. Shock wave. It was a shock wave. There we go, something like that. As this turret is going to be taken down, so there's a little bit back here for Fearex. But, um... They're not doing too much about this, uh, which could just mean a gap in the base. You can see Clear, he's electing to go back home. Baker could actually throw an orb in there if he would like to. Allowed to flip for the objective into Rel, which is very hard. Can yeah. her away, so, so maybe. And they are going to go for a heroic last stand. We'll, we'll see what they're able to actually get out of this. Grabbing the wave here on bot. The Verily's going to get themselves a turret. Closure does have TP. Oh dear, there is not a lot of vision down here. As Carrier just throwing Qs left, right, and center. Chains of Corruption onto Willa! And there is the Infernal Chains. It will be broken by Willa though as the Magnus Storm comes in with the immediate kick. I just don't know whether there was the right choice. Karma. Fade's call now coming in. Wait. Carrier off to the side. They're taking so much damage as Zayas gets into melee range. And you know, you you know that's bad news. There goes clear, and now it's whitewash once again. T1 just tear them to shreds. And that's gonna be the end of game number one. The deep teleport from Closer on Karma, unfortunately, not gonna be enough to turn the fight. Guma finds an ultimate on top of the Lee Sin. And now T1. Gonna get themselves up 1-0. Carrier played Ezreal. That did happen. He did, and he and he has a win on Ezreal as well.
And that's what matters. He's collecting all of the 80 carries. Needs to try and get a win on all of them in the support role as well. Let's try and get in there and just distract them, but it looks like the next starts are on the minds of T1. Execute will be executed, and Willa, he's not going to find a way this time. Uh, Henna trying to defend, but this Nexus is going to go down, and T1, it looked a little bit uh, dicey in the early game, but if you set up for the team fights right, it is going to work out your way really beautifully, picked up in the mid game. And yeah, they went back to not having it's, as much. It's, it's Nocturne, more fun than it's Rel. It's Nocturne Nico. It's good enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is fine. Uh, and this is also a heck of a lot of value. It means that a lot of that lockdown is still going to be there. And yeah, you don't get to do like the Magnet Storm Shockwave, but Pop Blossom Shockwave in the dark sounds pretty good to me. Sounds pretty broken. Yeah. And we will see to what extent Fear X is going to be able to withstand the power of T1 playing a lot of the same parts. Obviously, the Rel is a big swatch, uh, swap up. Now the Nocturne is going to make your team fight hard to play. And we'll get to see the Nico Sports I'm very worried about. As what? And this are we gonna are we gonna flip oh, the lane level one? Is the real one. Well, <laughs> Execute is going to say that one is carry on. Uh, and in oh fact, it was John. Who did it? There's a flash pulverized though, as Gumi Yushi's in so much trouble. The flash forward from Henna immediately, and he's gonna get first blood in the 2v2. And that is how you do it. They didn't even need Willa this time. Not too much is going to happen. So Willa trying to have that early presence that we saw in game number one. Hasn't found as much joy this time. As all right, there's the hex flash, head butt pulv, but Execute just gonna take some fire for his trouble. And now Henna, he's in a lot of it as well. These autos starting to pile up as the piercing arrow comes down. That was a lot of blight. And Gumiushi gets his revenge. They're going to try and find as many of these early angles as they can. Maybe centered around the reset power of this Kalista, but it's going to also depend on Execute actually having some level of early success in these fights. Maybe isolate a target together with Willer. But the last time was extremely oh, fast. Oh, no. Henna's just going to have to flash. Shockwave comes out. Oh, and and uh, Faker turns up and says, you guys are not getting any of these minions. Oh, Carrier hits six there as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and, and that means, in turn, that they can't move up to the wave. So they're going to lose Flash on Hana, two blades, and this entire wave. And to, oh. Or, like, the other the other option, right, is, is that what coaches say? That it's like, I don't think you should get solo killed again. Is yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if the player himself <laughs> knows that's a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's, uh, maybe maybe Zeus is just a big fan of the O2 power spike. You know, he's studied. Hey, that's true. I mean, there the are a lot of Nogari fans here. There exactly. are a lot of Nogari fans. There's one sitting right beside you. Yeah, well, absolutely. There's one sitting and right beside you, too. Hey! You know what I'm it goes in a circle. Infinite Nogari fans. <laughs> Pop Blossom into a fake ultimate. Yeah, you need to make sure you know which one's carrier and which one isn't. As there's an all-out special delivery as Willa gets the little mini wall stun, and Lean. the execution is there. Gorgeous play from the top jungle here of Fear X, and now Faker going to get pushed underneath the turret. There is the shockwave flash. I just don't know whether it's going to be enough here as the Sand Soldier comes out, and that is actually a one for one. Just absurd. V1 out of that closer. Fuddy around at the court, maybe could have flashed away from the final damage of the ball. There was right, execute. There's a flash pulverized. Headbutt back there as well as Pop Blossom grabs two. And now Henna is the target. Oh! He just pops. Oh, I didn't even think that was necessarily a bad move by Execute, but it just got outplayed. Really good positioning there from Carrier on the Pop Blossom. Henna needs to be in close range to do damage. And Plate's going to be picked up here as well, because it's just too strong if it does all just work out. As Willow going to come in, grab yourself some grubs. Should be three going over to them. They want to stick around. Might not care. We uh, have Harold spawning in about 45 seconds, so just a no grub game. Huh. So no mites. No scrubs. Yeah. You like that song? I'm a big fan. Uh, Always uh, TLC was a little bit. Uh, I felt like that that song was basically the same as what was the really famous Ed Sheeran song. If you listen to a mashup of No Scrubs, Nick Chronicler, and if you are both an Ed Sheeran and a TLC fan, ironically or unironically. Hey, uh, I don't believe in ironically enjoying music. I think, I think you, you just enjoy it. That's fine. 
Oh. It doesn't need to be ironically. Just enjoy it. It's fine. You, you can like stuff that isn't highbrow. Well, I mean, you could just hide. I mean, it depends. You know, it's like if you're the person that wants to do that. I'm just trying to get as many people to tweet at you as possible. That's what I'm going for. Uh, T1 going to back away after taking themselves the dragon. T-Rex are not going to be able to grab anything here as, oh, I felt it. Jonas Strong felt it as well. He's thinking that maybe there was a swoop afoot. That was the objective, which in that case wasn't going to ever happen. Or you need to commit. Ooh, flash. Oh, flash. Bit flash. Um, will it? Just mid his. He's just going to grab himself a Rift Herald. Wow. And, yeah. Um, Zayas just wanders away. He did umbrally dash as Empress Divide comes down. Now Execute's going to come in, but closer. Mike just dying. No. It is going to be Execute that helps lock it down with a hoof. As the teleport came in from Faker as well. I think closes out of this fight. There he goes. Faker locks down that kill. So a 4v4. As Faker's still looking to come around, and Carrier Pop Blossom gets into the back line alongside the Paranoia. Henna's still alive for the moment, but Clear now looking to try and clean this one up. He does go all out, but I don't know what he's going to be able to get done here. Gumiushi very, very low, trying to kite it out as best he can, and he does so! Still, Willa gets the double, and now it's Faker and Carrier versus the World Execute trying to be the bouncer. The Q is going to miss, the snare is going to be there, and Faker, he has no more mana to try and get this one. He's going to have to try and get some auto attacks. Zayas? Oh, Zayas just turns up. And it is now over. Unless Faker will be taken down. There's at least one back still. Will it pretty strong? He's not going to win oh! the fight against Zayas, but he takes down Carrier. Willer is trying so hard, man. Everyone died in that fight. I swear, at least twice. Ground here against Henna and Clear in the mid lane. Execute coming on over and will be able to clear out a little bit of this vision. Rift Arrow coming on through. It's the set plate to make sure you can get as much control of the river as possible as Gumi Ishii. A little bit by himself, but Zayas is going to rotate over. Clear taking some damage. And T1, they've already started off this dragon. And Faker so safe on a control ward here as well. As Ona now doesn't have flash, or at least uh, one charge now missing. As, all right, in goes Carrier. He finds the backline, the shockwave to take down Closer. And they're going to utilize Ona to try and get on top of Henna. He's going to get feared and taken out. And the damage dealers are just dead in the blink of an eye. That's how this composition is supposed to work. And T1, they give up on the Drake. It's time for Baron. They don't even care about getting an individual Mountain Drake. Run straight to Nash. I don't know if there's a whole lot that can be done by Fear X here. Willer is alive. Can the man get a Miracle Steal? Faker standing guard. It is harder to keep this Lee out of the pit, but there's just not enough vision. There's not enough people. And that'll be the end of Baron. A turret is all they're going to get. They might be able to get a single Drake, which... Oh, there you know, we go. There's two teleports available, though. I don't even know if T1 is going to let them have this. It looks like instead they're just going to go for the turret, say that we don't care too much. Yeah, and uh, Faker actually elected to stop the back, wanted to take down the turret, a bunch more money, and uh, delay the Drake Takers. Uh, this Pop Blossom, absolutely gorgeous. In live stuff is happening, but not all that important. And I, I want to highlight here as well, and, and this is something that is really easy to miss when you're looking at this from a spectator's point of view. If Clear and Wheeler actually had vision, I think they might have tried to could test the fight more because Guma was actually almost down. I don't know how much he could have reliably done, and they did still have a couple of big cooldowns available. But because of the nature of paranoia, they're like, we have to, we have to run out. Like there's just no way. We don't know where to go, and yeah. it makes a team fight that was already won even more one-sided. And it also really, oh, okay, nice sidestep by Clear as Pop Blossom is going to catch the Cassante, and no one is tanky enough to withstand that. It is a lot of investment for just a kill onto the top laner, but this is making sure that this Baron is going to be utilized to perfect effect. Henna is tidying up a wave on the top side of the map, and that means that it should mean they can go for a fight down here. There's the Paranoia Shockwave! As the Fear is going to go off against Closer, he's not dead just yet though. As Execute getting fairly close. There is no more minion wave, and Henna is just continuing to clear out these minions. So. Not too bad on the defense here on the side of Fear X, but it is still a 3.6 thousand gold Red Bull Baron power play. And more importantly, they might not get the turret initially, but they do on the follow-up. Right now, Fear X seeing their opportunity to extend this series slipping away from them. Gonna need 
an insane Hill Mary. All right, there's the kick flash onto Faker. They managed to get the pulverize as well. Fate's call to come through. Knockups are bound. Faker surviving for a very long time, but eventually will be taken out. And now it's Grimushi's turn. He's trying to kite it as best he can. Closer almost dies as Carrier. He's a cast of minion. Um, and he's just going to wander his way out. Zayas grabs himself 700 gold by taking down this inner turret. T1, they lose their two biggest damage dealers outside of Zayas. You don't have Morris. Baron buff. Well, Carrier is, is just... Um, <laughs> They're he's pretending. Um, and Henna is not going to buy it. Ah, but there is an Aatrox, and now there's a very dead Callista. Zayas, um, that's a lot of items you have there, sir. Okay, um, well now he's going to get chased down by Clear. Paranoia comes out though and they're going to dive on top of this. Kasante Pop Blossom onto three once again. Not a lot of follow-up, but he buys the space required to get Zayas out and Ona. Will are in a bit of trouble here as well. And man, Carrier is playing his heart out today. Went for Shirelia second as well. And of course there is a little bit of AP on that item, but we've been so used to seeing the yeah, as Nico mid. As he's going to find three again! And another paranoia comes down. Henna in a bit of trouble. He should get taken. Oh, well, actually surviving for a very long time. Carrier trying to limp his way out. Ona going to be able to get a drive-by onto the Callista. And he's also very tanky. Die. Yeah, and there's just no way for Closer to be able to get in there and do damage. As now Carrier going to uh, put a couple of um, versions of Faker around the map. Oh, wow. I just realized how overpowered it is to transform into Faker and make it so that there's three Fakers. It's three global taunts. Frozen heart and a good Wait, item. Wait, Carrier did the most damage in the game. What? Uh, okay. Uh, well, I guess that's what happens when you land amazing Pop Blossoms. Uh, it might be slightly changed now after Zayas does all of Closer's I, health bar. I was talking about he, how he doesn't do much damage. Okay, never mind. I take it back. It didn't look like he did that, but he's been hitting people a lot all game long, and that adds up. I, I don't think this is the game where he has T1 a, an elixir of iron, I, I, I don't think this is the game where T1 is no longer getting away with it. I think this is yet another one. I where actually they do. think they may have reinvented the meta. I don't even think it's a getting away with anything. I think we've now we're just having a glance into the future. T1, they, they're the knowers. We're the learners right now. We're starting to realize exactly just what is possible with support. Uh huh. Solo Q had it right all along. Exactly. All of those Zerus that were telling you that they're relevant. <laughs> they are! <sighs> okay, execute. This is your moment. Oh, Carrier can be a ward. Chains of Corruption do go wide though. There's the Paranoia and execute. No one's there for the rest of his team. Another Pop Blossom hits absolutely everyone. And the Shockwave says just pressing all of his buttons. And this is going to be the end of this game. Closer is going to have to flash away, but... The only upside is that he can maybe have a rest on his fountain, and even then, that is not going to be allowed. There are a couple of Nexus turrets that are proving to be a little bit frustrating, but Faker's going to be able to collect that kill. And uh, Kerry is going to take a well-deserved rest, as T1 will say goodnight to this game. I tell you what, though, uh, POGs are sometimes difficult. This time, it isn't, you know? No. And that's, and that's nice. Yeah, it's been there for a while. I love the paper. <laughs> Don't you worry. Up until the mid-game, I was like, yeah, yeah. Owner actually playing a clean game and not your yeah, favorite. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the... It's